If you want to learn more about managing Junos on an EX2200 series virtual chassis, be sure to check out our Junos Enterprise Switching course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the course in the keyword search box. Plus, you'll want to pay close attention as this appears on the JNCIS Enterprise Certification Exam. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello, and welcome to Upgrading Junos on an EX2200 virtual chassis learning bite. My name is Martin Brown. I'm a network security engineer for a tier one service provider, and I'm also an ambassador for Juniper Networks. A virtual chassis is a way of connecting several EX switches together to form one single logical unit. Now, most EX switches support the virtual chassis and these include the EX2200, 3300, 4200, and so on. The benefits of using a virtual chassis are, firstly, you have one single management IP address. So when you connect to the single address, you can manage multiple switches at the same time. You also have redundancy. The routing engine has a master and a backup in another switch. The remaining switches then become what is known as line cards. You can also configure what is known as aggregated links, and typically these remain on the same switch. However, in a virtual chassis, you can have one aggregated link on one line card and a second on another. So if a line card fails, you still have a link between a server or maybe a router. As the virtual chassis uses a special protocol, there is no need for spanning tree protocol within the virtual chassis, which means there's no reconvergence necessary to slow anything down. And you also have a thing called non-stop software upgrade, meaning you can upgrade the virtual chassis software line card at a time without bringing the whole virtual chassis down. This is except for the EX2200. We cannot perform a non-stop software upgrade on this switch because it does not support GRES or Graceful Routing Engine switchover. This means that any upgrade to the software on an EX2200 will be what is known as a disruptive change there will be some sort of downtime. The upgrade process itself is fairly simple. Firstly, we must make sure that the virtual chassis is up. There are no members that are down. Once we've confirmed this, we open the shell and we copy the upgrade package to the var temp directory. We exit the shell, then we request the system software add and specify the package name. We can then say reboot as well if we want to, and it is recommended to use no copy so that it doesn't add extra files to the flash. Then we need to wait for the upgrade to complete. Now this can take up to 30 minutes to complete. Therefore, if this is on a live switch, then the change should be done out of hours. So let's now go to the CLI and perform the upgrade. In our virtual chassis, we actually have two members, and I've connected to each of them via a terminal server to their console ports. This is to show how they react whilst the upgrade is in progress. And in the first window here, we have the master zero, and in this one we actually have member one. And we can say, show virtual chassis and we can see that we are running fine and the version which we want to upgrade from we're running 12.3 at the moment and we need to go to 12.3 r11 okay 
Now before we do this, just to prove that GRES or graceful routine engine switchover won't work on the EX2200, if we say show configuration chassis redundancy, we see we get this error here, configuration block of nod, unsupported platform. If this were anything other than a EX2200, we could say show task replication and it would say stateful replication is enabled. So our next step will be to copy the Junos upgrade from our FTP server to our master switch. If we say start shell and okay we're actually in root so we need to say cd slash var slash tmp and then we say FTP and our FTP server which is 10 10 0 23. Okay, so I'll very quickly slash array one slash juniper FTP slash ex2200, and I have several files, and the one I want is this one here. I'll let that copy and pause the recording. Okay, so now it's copied. We exit FTP back to the exec mode and then we can say request system software now if this was anything other than a 2200 we could then say non-stop software upgrade however as this is an ex2200 we just say add slash var slash tmp slash that's it. We can also say no copy, otherwise it will try and copy it to the flash it's already on. That will slow it down and could take up space. And in this case it will also say no validate just to speed up the process. And then finally reboot. Okay, now what we should see is it will start copying it to the backup first and then it will apply it to the master and it will reboot both at the same time and as we can see FPC1 is actually our backup and FPC0 is the master so we'll leave it to carry on and we'll come back periodically just to point out certain things of interest so we can see that it has now completed pushing the package to member 1 and we can see that it is now installing the package onto member zero or the master. If we look, we can see that member one hasn't rebooted yet. It will reboot them both at the same time. So it's now rebooting both of our members. And if we just give it a few moments more, okay. So member zero is rebooting, so is member one. Okay, so they should come up at roughly the same time. So again, we'll pause the recording and wait for it to finish completely. And that's it. The upgrade is complete. If we look between the two members, so we're on member zero now, and this is member one, you notice it's different because of these statistics here change. Okay, so we log in. Obviously, shouldn't be using root in a live environment, but as this is a lab, we'll use it here. And we can see that both member zero and member one are running the same version of software. 
and if we say show virtual chassis we can see that our chassis is operating correctly so that's it our upgrade is now complete and we are now free to resume operations on that network so to summarize our video the EX 2200s do not support GRES therefore the Junos upgrade will be a disruptive change of up to 30 minutes. We only need to copy the Junos upgrade package to the master switch and the master switch will push the upgrade package to all of the other members in the virtual chassis. Once complete all switches in the virtual chassis will be rebooted at the same time. And once we've finished, we should run the show virtual chassis command to make sure all the other switches are back online. I hope you've enjoyed this learning bite, and I'd like to say thank you for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.